Hi everyone, and thank you for tuning in to today's watercolor time lapse. In today's video, I'll be trying out a set of art supplies from this company called Arteza. First off, I'll be using the Arteza watercolor paper pad with a nice thickness of 300 grams per meter squared and also a beautiful, lightly textured surface that is great for watercolor painting. For the paint, I'll be using this set of 36 half pans of watercolors. It comes with a nice little information pamphlet cover that tells you the name of each color, as well as a water brush pen that I won't be using for this video, but will be trying later as I get more practice. I also usually incorporate colored pencils into my watercolor pieces to add refinement to the small details and give the piece a more interesting texture. So I was thrilled to try out Arteza's stunning 72-piece colored pencil set. I also supplemented with some of my own art materials, like this ramekin for water, this plastic palette from Amazon, and some of my old watercolor brushes I had collected over the years. Arteza was kind enough to offer all of my viewers 10% off of their art supplies until February 28th. So check out the video description for the special coupon code as well as links to all of the supplies used in today's video. Okay, let's get started with some swatches. For each color, I tried to create a gradient going from the most opaque and saturated state to the most faded and diluted state. I did this by first wetting my brush and then loading as much color from the pan as I could and then drawing a small square on my paper with that brush. Then I cleaned the brush as thoroughly as I could in the water and using that clean empty wet brush, I basically kind of pulled down at each color until I could create a nice gradient. This was the first time I had ever created a watercolor swatch, and although I'm still a fairly new at it, I can definitely see how it's a very helpful way to set up like a starting point or a cheat sheet for when you actually begin your painting because you have an accurate idea of how each color behaves, both when it's mixed with a lot of water and you're wanting to do light washes and also when it's extremely opaque for when you want those dynamic kind of focal points in your piece. And I'll definitely be continuing to make more swatches with every single medium because now I see just how useful it can be and it's totally worth the time. I'm drawing the outline for my painting with this rose colored erasable colored pencil sharpened with my favorite electronic pencil sharpener. The reason I like to line my works with a colored pencil instead of ink or graphite is because I find that the colored pencils usually interact better with watercolors and there's very little muddying or cloudiness going on. And also it lays a more interesting starting point for when I begin to incorporate colors in the piece because I try to find colors that match the line color and they usually create a really kind of consistent palette of colors that all really fit together and complement each other. The reason I lined this piece with pink colored pencil is because I had planned for pink to be the statement color that stood out the most. So for the background elements, I decided to use light washes of lavender and muted yellows. And then I applied very bold and opaque pinks to the elements I wanted to stand out, such as the mushrooms and her hair color. Watercolor is still a fairly new medium for me, and I know there's so much I still have to learn. One main struggle I had was rectifying the differences between watercolor techniques and oil painting techniques. For example, in oils, if I wanted a color to be lighter in value, all I had to do was usually mix in more white. But in watercolors, I had to rely on the whiteness of the paper. And instead of mixing white into my colors, I just had to use the same color but use a lighter wash so that the layer was more transparent and more of white from the paper can show through. So throughout this process, I had to constantly remind myself to not use my instinctual oil painting techniques and instead adhere to techniques that are most optimized for watercolors. Also in oils, if I wanted to achieve a smooth gradient effect, all I had to do was blend with my brush. And in watercolors, I had to rely on carefully arranging each layer of washes to achieve an illusion of blending without actually blending. Also with oils, you had a larger margin of error from messing up because you could work in layers and paint over things. You could refine edges and lines by continually painting around them or covering them up. 
But with watercolors, there's way less forgiveness because you're kind of forced to make everything work on one layer. If you accidentally painted something dark and you wanted to cover it up with something light, that was pretty much impossible to do unless you used another medium like acrylic or something. I found watercolors to be very reminiscent of my school days when I used to color inside of coloring books and especially in the areas with very fine details, you really had to be careful to not color outside the lines. However, despite the differences between watercolors and oils, I found overall the process of watercolor painting to be extremely calming and zen and therapeutic. There was something about patiently applying washes and also um, watching the watercolors organically swim around and create their own textures and shapes that really helped soothe my soul and it's something I really looked forward to. It was definitely and still is a bit of a learning curve but I think as I get more comfortable with this medium I can see definitely where the differences between watercolors and oils are actually something to be enjoyed and admired rather than something that's just a hindrance or inconvenience. And overall, I was very pleasantly surprised and satisfied with the quality of Arteza's watercolor and colored pencil materials. I haven't made that many watercolor pieces in my life, but before I started oil painting, I did do watercolors for a while, and back then I used rather cheap student grade watercolor supplies. And I actually started off using watercolors that you squeeze from the tube because all of the watercolor pans I had used in the past just didn't contain much pigment and it was really frustrating to work with. But with Arteza, even the pans were so pigmented and super easy to load onto the brush and if you wanted to apply a really opaque amount of color you could do so with just loading your brush up once using the pans so i was very impressed with that and also the quality of their watercolor paper was life-changing for me i am now a firm believer in splurging a little bit to get premium quality watercolor papers because the difference between a cheap and thin paper and a thicker and more premium quality paper is night and day. A thin, cheap paper doesn't really hold up to the many layers of washes very well, especially if you get the paper too wet. A thin paper will just start to kind of erode away. But this paper withstood so much of my noob watercolor abuse because I was constantly applying, reapplying very wet layers and the surface and texture of the paper always stayed intact with pretty much no warping at all. Their colored pencils were pretty solid as well and very comparable to the quality of the Prismacolor brand that I usually have been using, but sadly I never got to use that many colors because I was only using the colored pencils to refine the final details. So in the future I'll have to definitely create an artwork using more of the colored pencils to fully try out their full potential. And because I'm such a sucker for highlights, I couldn't call this piece done until I incorporated some white highlights using a General's white charcoal pencil and a Uniball Signo white gel pen. And that about wraps up the piece. I hope you guys enjoyed watching my process of this trippy mushroom girl with a third eye. And once again, you can find a discount code to the awesome Arteza art supplies in the video description. And if you're interested in adopting this mushroom girl, I do have the original and prints listed in my shop at happyd-artist.com shop. And real quick before I leave, I just wanted to let you guys know I'm having a Valentine's Day print sale so you can get 20% off of your order of prints using the code LOVE at happyd-artist.com and the sale will end February 14th. Also, if you want to check out more artworks, works in progress, and just random daily artist adventures, feel free to check out my Instagram and you can follow me at the handle at happydartist. And if you're interested in learning more about how to paint and draw, I have lots of art educational content on my Patreon page, including exclusive video tutorials, step-by-step -step photo tutorials, live streams, podcasts, and so much more, all available at patreon.com slash happydartist. I'd love to have you join my Patreon family. 
Thank you guys so much again for watching and for all of your support. I can't wait to share more art with you guys and I hope to catch you guys in my next video. Have an awesome day wherever you are. Bye.